All right, news of Iran's missile attack on Israel echoed in the halls of Congress. Lawmakers are feeling the pressure to act on Israel aid and bring new sanctions against Iran. But at what price? Capitol Hill correspondent Eric Rosales joins us now with the latest. Eric. Good evening, Tracy. The Republican-led House has completely changed its legislative schedule this week. Now lawmakers are concentrating on more than a dozen bills related to Iran's attack on Israel. But House Speaker Mike Johnson hasn't yet announced a former Israeli aid bill. We are expecting an announcement after the GOP conference meeting, and Democrats are also meeting as well. Meanwhile, senators are urging the House to act quickly. If House Republicans put the Senate supplemental on the floor, I would believe it would pass today, reach the president's desk tonight, and Israel would get the aid it needs by tomorrow. It's time for the commander-in-chief to lead allies and partners in an international effort to impose meaningful costs on Iran. I do believe we need to move as quickly as possible. So however Speaker Johnson can get this across the finish line, he should. Iraq War combat veteran Senator Joni Ernst says aid for Israel must include funds for Ukraine and Taiwan as well. Israel is our partner. Uh, we know that Iran targets not only Israel, but American soldiers throughout the Middle East. When it comes to Ukraine, they're kind of that final buffer between Russia and NATO. And of course, China, they are everywhere, but we need to enhance our presence in, in Taiwan. It would be most appropriate for the Congress to do in response is for Speaker Johnson to put on the floor tomorrow the supplemental that was passed by the Senate by a broad bipartisan majority and promptly send it to President Biden. That will send a strong signal. But some senators have doubts about funding all three. I think Israel is a much closer ally, is a much more core American national security interest. And of course, we've got to focus on ourselves. That means encouraging the Ukrainians to take a defensive strategy. We've got to focus on our core problems. I think Israel is much more important to the United States than Ukraine is. I don't understand where my colleague Vance has about Ukraine as well, too. In fact, he owns in my opinion, the dumbest thing I've ever heard about Ukraine, where he claims to some effect that he doesn't care what happens in Ukraine. And that, that's astonishing to me. California Congressman uh, Ro Kahana and 56 uh, other Democratic lawmakers wrote President Biden. They want him to put restrictions on whatever American tax dollars or ammunition that's sent to Israel. We need to have defensive weapons to Israel so that they don't face an attack from Iran, but we cannot be giving them more offensive weapon when over 30,000 people in Gaza have died, many women and children. And what about the anti-Israeli protests taking place across the country like today's, which shut down the Golden Gate Bridge? Well, the protesters have a right in this country. I mean, we have a strong tradition of marches across bridges from John Lewis. Uh, but what I would say is the most effective protests are ones uh, outside uh, U.S. Capitol offices, the State Department, uh, to galvanize uh, opinion. A very interesting point came from Florida Senator Marco Rubio today. He says Iran knows that it doesn't have the military might against Israel, but it just wants to make Israel an unbearable place to live. Tracy. Well, Eric, I know you're also following other topics that are making headlines on the Hill right now. Tell us about that. Well, that is correct. Uh, let's talk about the articles of impeachment against DHS Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. Uh, they're going to be coming over from the House over to the Senate tomorrow afternoon. And Majority Leader Chuck Schumer is yet to announce if he will actually bring them to the floor for a vote or if he's going to try and dismiss them. Also, you may recall the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Bill, also known as FISA. Well, it must pass the Senate sometime this week before the April 19th deadline. And intelligence officials have said FISA is vital to fighting terrorism both here and abroad. But several lawmakers are trying to stop it. They're saying that reforms don't go far enough and that the FBI and other federal law enforcement agencies have already violated America's rights with FISA, including the former president, Donald Trump, when they investigated the fake Russian dossier. At the Capitol, Eric Rosales, EWTN News Nightly.